Okay, so here's the second video of derivative of inverse functions. And so they want me to find f inverse prime of zero. So I am gonna use that same definition that we had used for example one, which was f inverse prime of a number is going to be one over f prime of f inverse of that number. So we do have to identify what a is. And since I have this definition, the, the, more, the more complex definition of it without the G, I think the G confused things. Um, so I took the G out and left the F inverse in there. But note that here A, A is going to be zero. So note that A equals zero in this case, okay? And so I'm gonna follow those same steps as I did before. Um, so step one is to go ahead and figure out what um, f inverse of a equals, right? So in my case, I'm going to be figuring out what f inverse of zero is. And I know that's going to be an x value. And so if I change this, it's like f of x equals zero. And so then since my function f of x is sine, it's like saying sine of 2x equals 0, right? Because that's what f of x is. And then I can change this over to say 2x equals the sine inverse of 0. And remember the domain of sine inverse is always here. Where's the y value equal to 0? It's at 0 radians. So 2x would have to equal 0 radians, right? which we don't write radians, but I wanted to point out. It's also zero degrees, but we have to use radians in these problems. So then if I divide both sides by two, I get that x just equals zero. And so this is important because it's going to come into play in the third step, right? The second step is just to find out f prime of x. And so if I take the derivative of f of x, the derivative of sine is cosine, and because the angle is not just x, I do have to apply the chain rule, which means I get to multiply by the derivative of 2x, which is 2. And so if I simplify that, I can put that 2 coefficient in the, in the front as a coefficient. And then the response is 2 cosine of 2x. So then now I'm going to do step 3, which is to do f prime of whatever we got from step 1. So we're gonna do f prime of zero in this case because that's the x value we found from part one. So we're gonna do two cosine of two times zero, which is two cosine of zero, and is two times one, which is just two. And then step four is to just do one over whatever response we got from part three, so one over two. And that's going to be the final answer for example two. So then now for example three, we have find the derivative of the function and it says three arctan x squared. So to do this one, I'm going to define u as x squared. And then if I take u prime, the derivative of x squared is two x. And so I can rewrite this as three times the arc 10 of x squared. And so when I find the derivative of this, the coefficient is just going to stay there. And then for the definition of our derivative of arc 10 of x squared, we end up with um, u prime, which is 2x over one plus the u, which is x squared squared. So then if I simplify this, that's 2x over 1 plus x to the fourth. And if I multiply that, I get 6x over 1 plus x to the fourth. And so then that is um, what we end up there as our final answer. Okay. Now, if I go ahead and um, continue, I will go to the example four. We still have a little bit of time. That kind of only took us about four minutes. So let's keep going with the next one. Um, here it just wants us to find the derivative. We do have two terms. However, I'm gonna do a couple of things when I rewrite this. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exaggerate the fact that that's x squared times the other factor. 
and I'm going to put this factor in its power rotation so that um, radicand raised to the one half exponent and then I'm also going to magnify that this is all the first term plus the second term which is arc cosine of x over 2. So when I'm doing the derivative I need to take the derivative of this term plus the derivative of that term. Also when I'm taking the derivative of the first term because it's a product I am going to have to use the product rule. So here we go for the definition for the derivative. I get the first term times the derivative of the second term. And since the base is not just an x, I do have to apply the, the chain rule. So 0 and negative 2x. Oh, that's not the end of the derivative. That's just the first part of the product rule. So the first factor times the derivative of the second factor plus the second factor times the derivative of the first factor, which is 2x. Now that is the end of the entire product rule. And I'll simplify it in the next step. Plus, now I've got to take the derivative of arc cosine x over 2. So here I'm going to say u is x over 2, and then u prime would be 1 over 2. And so if I use my theorem for that, I get negative u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared. And so I'm also going to have to simplify that quite a bit, okay? So let's simplify this because the computer's not going to accept this. They want the answer as one single fraction, okay? So this is going to be quite some algebra in order to get this all as one single fraction because we've got three different terms here, okay? So let's go ahead and simplify the first term. This 2 is going to cancel with that 2. That and that is going to give me negative x cubed. And I'm going to keep this term the same for now. I'll rewrite it in a, diff in a minute. Then this is 2x times 4 minus x squared to the 1 half. And then actually plus and minus will give me a minus sign. And then I'm going to take this 2 because it's in the denominator, so it should be in this denominator. So that's 2. And on the bottom, I'm actually going to square this. So I get 1 minus x squared over 4. So this is not a pretty problem at all, but let's just keep going. Now because this is negative, I can write it as 4 minus x squared positive 1 half. And the rest of it I'm just leaving alone for now. And then over here I am going to take, that's not a 2 index, it's like a big giant 2 in front of that, um, in front of the radical. It's just a, a factor, it's not a, a index. So I don't want to write it too small because then that could get if you, um, But I am going to get a common denominator here, so 4 over 4 minus x squared over 4. And so then now I'm going to write this as a radical. So 4 minus x squared. And I'm going to write this one as a radical. So 4 minus x squared. And over here I'm going to simplify this into, uh, remember this is a big 2, 4 minus x squared over 4. And let's keep going. So I'm going to rewrite the first two terms and I'm going to try to simplify that third term. So I get 1 over 2 and then I'm going to do the square root of 4 minus x squared over the square root of 4. Now we know that the square root of 4 is 2 so essentially this is going to cancel with the 2 in the front. And we end up with negative x cubed over this plus 2x square root of 4 minus x squared. I can just put it over 1. Um, minus 1 over the square root of 4 minus x squared because this 2 and this denominator canceled, right? Now in order for me to add the three fractions together, they do have to have a common denominator. This one does not have a denominator or it has a denominator of invisible 1. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to multiply by that common denominator 4 minus x squared over itself 4 minus x squared. 
And what I end up with here is negative x cubed over the square root of four minus x squared. And then here I end up with two x, and then I end up with the square root of four minus x squared times itself, means it's squared, over the square root of four minus x squared. And the last fraction stays the same. And so then let's see what we get here. We get negative x cubed, this would be 2x, and when I square that, it's going to undo the square root, minus 1, the whole thing over the common denominator. So now I've got one giant fraction, right? But I do need to simplify this fraction. So let's go ahead and distribute that positive 2x. We get 8x, we get negative 2x cubed, and bring down the minus 1, bring down that denominator and then combine the like terms. So we get negative three x cubed plus eight x minus one over the square root of four minus x squared. And now it is in one giant simplified fraction and that is the answer that they're going to be looking for. So again, I've kind of run over about 10 minutes. I do have one more example, but it is going to take a while. So I'm gonna stop this video here and then I'll continue with the third part in just a bit.